Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a build, a Sarah counter, a Sarah tech deck build that is designed at putting a consistent amount of power on the board and countering whatever big, powerful plays your opponent's deck wants to do. And so whether that be a lot of one cost cards for a Khazar Zoo, we have the Killmonger. If it's really high power cards that follow up a Shuri but aren't protected behind an armor or a Cosmo, we have the Shang-Chi. The Enchantress can destroy the armor location that they thought was saving their big power plays. It can take out the Devil Dinos, the Hawks, um, all of those cards that are running pretty rampant right now. And then the rest of the deck is geared towards being able to push a good amount of power across the board relatively easily and with a low curve. We do have Sarah in the deck to help us flood on the last turn if we need to, but we don't always need to. Sometimes we're just going to throw Magneto into the board and that surprise factor, that surprise element of pulling their three and four cost cards can be enough to make them miscalculate where and how they should play their power on the last turn. So originally the list had an arrow over Magneto, but I have found that arrow is not super impactful in most matches. Whereas Magneto can help you play into Plunder Castle. It can help you disposition the opponent's cards and just have a little bit more reach. If it gets leached, that's fine. It still has a really high base power and it just adds to the flexibility of the list. It's not necessarily required. You could run the arrow version, um, but I prefer this one. As far as Angela, you could cut Angela because a lot of times she's just going to be four to six power. You could cut Angela and run a Maximus instead. Maximus is a really high base power card, but at the same time, if it increases your curve a little bit, you're not going to be able to play as early as efficiently. And sometimes you're going to have that decision of should I play it and allow them to draw extra resources or should I just skip on three and skipping on three never feels like the, the way to go. But overall, the deck runs very, very well. It can adjust to most of what you see in the game and in the meta. The thing that this list is going to struggle with the absolute most is Galactus. If you're seeing a lot of Galactus, you will probably need to swap one of your cards in for a Cosmo. Maybe you add back in the arrow. That's where arrow becomes pretty impactful. Um, but I do like the Magneto. If they happen to wave, then you can use Magneto to move their wave over into that lane. You have a couple of ways to try to block it, just it's not as efficient. And unless you're building very heavily towards that one deck, if you're not seeing it all that often, a lot of times you are going to be able to climb even without direct counters to the Galactus. If we see a lot of Galactus, I think we change some of the cards out. But overall, as it currently stands and what I see in the meta and what I match up against in the game, it does perform very, very well. So with the brief deck explanation out of the way, if you want to see this deck or any of our other decks live, make sure to check us out on twitch.tv slash TLSGSnap. We're going live every single weekday. And with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, next up we have Resilient Highlander. The first location is Throne Room. So cards there are going to have their highest power, with the highest power, are going to be doubled. We get Asgard, so I think we may fight for Asgard. Maybe the fight for Asgard. We have Lizard. We could eventually maybe do Enchantress if it looks like they're going to cap it out. We do have our Sentinel and our Killmonger, so if we can get our additional resources, I think that's really all that we need. They play Sunspot in the right lane. That's uh, it was a good sign for us to, to snap, I think. I'm leaning towards I'm leaning towards a snap. So even if we don't get the power from our Nova, actually think we just Killmonger this turn. We don't even let it start taking over. So in case they had an armor, we don't want to give them the chance to protect the Sunspot. Um, so it might be, <laughs> it might have been uh, a bit hasty. I don't, I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and Enchantress in mid, just in case they try and throw something crazy there. We're going to take away the ne ne negative downside of our Lizard. Next turn we have Sarah, so we'll probably play Sarah over to the left. And then we can Flood on the last turn. Wow, and so they do play She-Hulk, and so they were going to try to do something pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and do Sarah. On the last turn, we do have Shang-Chi, so we can take out this location. If we can find a way to win one of the other two, then I think we are okay. And so Sarah comes down, Red Skull comes down in the Vibranium Mines. Oof. Which is a bit scary. Um, they could have, I mean, they could have done Red Skull into the, the throne room, but for whatever reason, they didn't. Why didn't they? Why, why would they not play it there? 
Because if, then if they have a Taskmaster, that's the 26 power Taskmaster. We have the Shang-Chi, so if they do have Taskmaster, it's not going to be effective. And we do something like uh, this. We're not going to have the highest power, so we're going to get rid of the double effect. I don't think we're going to have the highest power anyways. But I think we do this. They're going to have to fight for all three locations to be able to win them. Is this the best split of our power? I don't know. It's questionable. But I am going to let it let it fly. This could be an Arnim Zola, I guess. Arnim Zola would be wild here. And we, I think we, we would still win, but it'd just be absolutely wild. They just play the one card. After snapping, they only play one card on the final turn. What could it be? What do they have? Kang. Okay, that makes sense. The Kang, Kang makes sense. So now, so now how do they win from here? And do we change our play line at all? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm going to change my play line a little bit. We're going to keep the left lane where it takes away that double power in case we need to win a tiebreaker. We're also going to put a real Mysterio in mid. Then we're going to take away their power in the right lane. We're also going to reinvest a little bit more. So if they have a Titania, we'll be able to win the right lane with the restructuring of our power. Okay, they do end up retreating. So Kang ended up uh, saving them, uh, I guess, a few cube, uh, an extra cube, maybe? I don't know. We're going to go ahead and take the one cube. Let's jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have only bad puns. We have my spirit animal, because um, we only have the Wong puns here. They only have the bad ones. We only have the Wong ones. So let's go ahead and play our Nova. We do have Scarlet Witch. We could change Oscorp Tower, but I don't want to restrict us necessarily in doing that. They have their Sunspot over in the right lane. Unless they protect it, we will have a chance to use our Killmonger on it. Uh, ooh, we do get a Killmonger. So I think we're going to go ahead and change the Raft. I know that I'm most likely not going to be able to flood enough cards looking at our pretty high curve. And so we're just going to go ahead and change mid um, just to make sure that they don't get the free resource either. Dream Dimension comes down, which is uh, not great. It's never it's never a good game whenever you end up seeing Dream Dimension on the board. It makes like Sarah Tex much more difficult. And so luckily we don't have to rely on Sarah every single every single game. It just helps us you know, flood the board on the last turn. But we can curve into our cards a little bit easier in most games. Wow. So they play the She-Hulk early. These, these games we're seeing a lot of people like really float a lot of their stuff onto the board. Uh, unprotected rather early. I'm going to try a Shang-Chi. Maybe it works. They have initiative with the Sarah with the She-Hulk. They were able to grab initiative. We're gonna get, we're gonna try a, a Shang-Chi. Maybe they have a Shuri. No, a Lizard. So strange. Anyways, we're gonna take away mid. They do win the right lane, or they they grab priority from the right lane. We can do one card. We're we're gonna go ahead and do our Killmonger. Let's do the Killmonger to the right. Maybe on the last turn we do Magneto to the left. Since we are a little bit disrupted with what we can do because of Dream Dimension. So they do Maximus. They send us two additional resources. We do maintain the lead. We will pull Maximus out of Titan. And I'm pretty sure that this is the best we can do. We're going to lock it in. We're going to see. Depending on where they play their power, we could get we could get out maneuvered here. But I don't think they're going to anticipate the Magneto coming down. So maybe they invest a little bit into Oscorp Tower and just not quite enough. Because I don't think between the Maximus and the Lizard, we're ever going to win the Oscorp Tower lane. So they do put two cards in Titan. I wonder what two cards. We're pulling the Maximus. Hopefully it's not more than eight, uh, but it's two two cards. Doctor Doom. Wow. We will, uh, we will gladly take it. Wow. 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 We do get the we do get the lead. Uh, we do get the win with the reduction from Titan. They were able to do Doctor Doom and Iceman. So 15, 17 power on that last turn. We were just able to maneuver their cards inefficiently enough that we were able to find a win. We'll take the two cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have the man, the myth, the legend. D money himself. Uh, the first location is bar with no name. We do have Scarlet Witch to be able to eventually change it. So maybe we wait, depending on what he's running, maybe we wait until the last turn of the game. And then we just surprise drop a Scarlet Witch there so that we can invest resources in that lane. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. It really depends on what he's running, if that's something that we want to look at. 
Now he runs us. He, he played a Sentinel. Could be Cerebro three. Could be some kind of Sarah value deck. Oof. Um, and then Warrior Falls is going to cause our Nova to get destroyed here. Not what you want to see. Oh well. We'll go ahead and we'll, we're going to play Sentinel in mid. We're going to let Nova get destroyed. That will at least buff this lane up by two. That's on that's on par with what a normal one cost should provide. <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately, we're going to have to get his use early. He plays a Sentinel in Necrotia just in case we do anything over the three. That way all of his Sentinels don't get destroyed. I'm curious if he's running a Cerebro 3 deck. Which is a possibility. Um, we do have... We have four energy now. If we tempo drop the Enchantress, that might be a mistake. I think we're just going to go with another Sentinel. Surprise, surprise. We're going with the Sentinel. Um, next turn, we're going to be able to do Sarah. We probably do Sarah um, Bar With No Name, maybe? We play it into Bar With No Name. That'll give them the lead. Maybe we play it into Warrior Falls. I don't know. Depending on what and where he plays this turn, uh, the Sarah may go into the Warrior Fall location. All right, so he doubles down in Necrotia. Let's see. They they snapped going into this turn. Loot Cage is a big one. Uh, Loot Cage is going to give them a lot of value in Necrotia. It's kind of unfortunate, but it's uh, I think it's okay. Let's go ahead and do Sarah in the right lane. We're going to hope that somehow he doesn't bring it down to three and both of these get destroyed. That's our hope. On the last turn, we will be able to do Enchantress to take away the Loot Cage ability. We will have uh, Scarlet Witch to change the left lane. If we wanted to, we could always try to do like a Magneto to pull some cards around. But I think we're in a decently okay spot with the Enchantress. Enchantress, even in Ceratex, is something that has fallen out quite a bit. And so it's not always anticipated. And so I think within that unanticipation is where we have room for explosive last turn plays. Oh, right. So the Cosmo in the right lane and the Atom Warlock in the right lane. Interesting. This does still kind of look like maybe a Cerebro 3 to an extent. I don't know. I don't know what this one will be. We do know that we're going to Enchantress the Loot Cage. Could be, I mean, it could be Cerebro 3 with that runs like a Valkyrie. They do have locational changes in it for Bar With No Name. So, I mean, I expect that he plays something over there. We're going to we're gonna invest all of our stuff into that location along with the Enchantress in mid. The Enchantress in mid alone should win us this location. Then it just comes down to if we have more power in a Bar With No Name than they do. So I assume he probably plays, what, a Rhino and a Rhino and a Cerebro maybe? Well, that might be the play. Rhino, Cerebro, but does that do it for them in the left lane? I don't know. We do get the retreat coming down from D-Money. We will go ahead and take it. I thought we were going to be able to see the last turn play out. Unfortunately, we did not get that luxury. We will go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Myth. The first location is the Dream Dimension. I feel like as soon as we switch over to Sarah Dex, we've been seeing Dream Dimension like every other game. But it is what it is. It's fine. It's fine. We're not salty about it. So we're going to go ahead and play Angela into mid, into Stark Tower. I think we angle the Bishop into the left lane. We won't be able to do Sarah because uh, courtesy of Dream Dimension, unless we draw Scarlet Witch. That's our only hope, our only chance. They go with a really early She-Hulk. So they skip turn one, turn two, and then they drop a massive She-Hulk on turn three. We don't have our Shang-Chi yet, so we're still hoping. We're hoping to eventually see, oh hey, wow, into a Shuri. Surely they're not gonna do this to us. Uh, that is massive. So the She-Hulk being on the board, we finally do see a Shuri deck and we don't have our strong counters to it. I think it's a rough one. I think this turns into a rather rough one. We can't do the, the we can't do the Sarah. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna play, I mean, we could have played Mysterio. We probably should have played Mysterio. Mysterio would have buffed up Bishop further and uh, I think would have been a little bit more advantageous for us. They play a, a Typhoid Mary in the left lane. Um, it does have its ability intact, and so there's that small glimpse of okayness. So there's a couple of ways we could play this last turn. We could do Mysterio, uh, Nova, and then Killmonger. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 extra power here. 
but it only brings us to 18. Doesn't quite get us what we need. So that's not gonna be a viable play line. I mean, we could try here, but I think they probably have the Taskmaster. So instead, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna try doing the Magneto to the right. I think they probably play for a Taskmaster here and a Titania, a zero something into Stark Tower. And so if we can force them into, well, actually, I'm now thinking we lose this one, but we don't have a great play line either way. If we had Shang-Chi, I think this would be much easier. So the Arnold Zola is wild. Um, and then one card in mid. We may have gotten very, very lucky. So Magneto is going to come down. That's going to pull their mid Typhoid Mary, their mid Shuri. Um, all they're left with is uh, 10 power in Stark Tower. We very heavily lose Titan, uh, but we are able to hold down Dream Dimension in Stark Tower. Wow, wild. There were so many ways that that game was lost. But we do get the surprise element of the Magneto, allowing us to find a way to secure the win. Crazy. We will go ahead and take it. Let's jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Fez. The first location is the Space Throne. And so uh, it's not great for us. The second one is Murder World, which is also not great. So we're going to play into the unknown with our Lizard. Not good location so far. We don't have our Scarlet Witch to change either one. Miniaturized Lab, wow. It's pick your poison. Um we're gonna play we're gonna play Bishop into the left lane, because that's really all that we can do. Ooh. They ran a Polaris. Uh I guess hoping to pull our lizard, and since we played a bishop, only because we were really restricted in like what we could play and where. We ran a bishop. And so we have a chance to be able to outpower what they have here. If not, we have Magneto that can hopefully pull the players out of the Space Throne and just giving us a free win in that lane. And so they have the Sentinel. Um, this looks like another like Sarah Tech like mid-range deck. They also have Nova. So do we? I think we interrupt their regularly scheduled broadcast or a Killmonger and a Sentinel. That way they don't get any more on the board. It's only going to give two value. And then we're angling and hoping to pull Magneto on the last turn. That's our that's our big our big hope. I assume they probably have Sarah here and that they're going to want to flood a decent amount of cards and a, a decent amount onto the board. Maybe we can stop it from happening. Sarah here is going to be the four extra power. Yeah. Since we didn't have Sarah, we didn't go that route. We do have initiative, I mean, the best we can do. I mean, I guess we could do that. That would push it up to seven with the bishop. But we have initiative, so that's not great. We're going to lean on, on the, the Magneto. I don't know if that's the right call. The the player says six power. We're just, I think we're just going to hope. Okay, we do get the retreat. If we put them in a tough spot. The locations definitely didn't help. The fact that we were able to get a card into this into the space throne comfortably also didn't help at all we are going to go ahead and take our one cube and that's actually where we're going to go ahead and end the video so overall the regular sarah tech i think is fairly viable you do have to play it a little bit more patiently you're probably going to get lower cube games so you're not going to see the high variance uh, four and eight cube games as often but you can slowly but surely chip away and uh, and climb with this list. And it's fairly accessible to Series 3 players. And so there's several ways to build a Sarah deck. I'm looking at doing an in-depth Sarah guide that covers a lot of the different options, the pros and cons, the strengths, weaknesses, what each deck can do well, and where they have areas of opportunity. But I did want to showcase this one because it's still a very viable way to climb. And so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.